Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Many of you have been maybe familiar with our mission at Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department, which is to protect and promote the public's health. The work we do every day helps protect our community and a great example of this is the Safe Kids program. If you're a parent, you most likely heard of Safe Kids. Safe Kids at the local, state, and national level is a go-to resource for families and communities about information and tools that help protect children from injuries and keep them safe. Unintentional injuries have been and continue to be a leading cause of death and disability to children 14 years of age and younger across the nation. The health department led the effort to establish the Safe Kids Coalition in Lancaster County in 1995. Today, we partner with more than 70 local organizations to help prevent childhood injuries through the work of the coalition. The coalition is comprised of six task forces that address priority injury areas, and these include child passenger safety, pedestrian and bicycle safety, fire and burn prevention, water safety, home safety, and sports injury prevention, which leads us to why we're here today. The popularity of youth sports requires us as a responsible community to ensure young athletes are as safe as possible. Nationally, about 30 million youth participate annually in sports. Over 22,000 youth athletes are represented on the five youth sports organizations partnering with Safe Kids, with a total estimate of around 50,000 participants each year. Nationally, an average of 3.5 million youth sports injuries are treated yearly by medical professionals. Many, if not most, of these injuries are preventable. Today, we are joined by members of the Safe Kids Injur Sports Injury Prevention Task Force to launch some valuable new resources for local youth sports organizations, coaches, and families to reduce the risk of injury to their athletes. The resources focus on the leading causes of youth sports injuries, concussion, overuse in injury, and dehydration. Our task force members will provide more details on the development of these user-friendly resources and why they are a must-have for every member of our youth sports community. Starting us off will be task force co-chair, Dr. Mike Stutz, associate professor and athletic trainer at Nebraska Wesleyan University. Following Mark will be task force co-chair, Dr. Natalie Rohn-Shigan, sports medicine physician at Children's Hospital and Medical Center in Omaha. And next will be task force members Ricardo Niola, president of Dreamers FC Soccer, and then Brian Vanis, president of Lincoln Sox Baseball. Thanks to you and the other task force members who aren't here today for your contributing knowledge and expertise on this project. Now I'll turn the podium over to Dr. Stutz. Thank you, Director Lopez, and thank you for all of you that are here today and are watching online. For the past five years plus, I have had the privilege of serving on the Sports Injury Prevention Task Force with the past two years as either chair and currently as co-chair. When I was first approached about serving on uh, the Safe Kids Task Force, I was impressed with its focus on preventing and reducing injuries in youth sports and I gladly joined the task force. As I believed, and I still believe this today, this is a worthy cause to pursue. You see, as an athletic trained educator, as a practicing athletic trainer and researcher, I've spent more than 20 years researching and speaking on this exact topic. Besides this sheer focus, I was also impressed with the involvement of the members of the Lincoln Lancaster County community and saw the support that this task force had and as they say, this was a perfect match. I'm passionate about the topics of preventing concussion, dehydration, and overuse injuries in youth athletes because I know that many of these can linger and even cause issues as, for children as they age. 
I want to express my appreciation for the commitment that each of the organizations <clears throat> and individuals has made so that we can help together keep our community safe, especially our young athletes, that we can help keep them injury free and minimize the impact that might have on them as they do age and grow older. The purpose of our project that we're introducing today is to provide youth sport organizations, both recreational and competitive, their families and the youth athletes themselves with best practices and resources on preventing sports related injuries to young athletes. The leading causes of youth sports injuries are concussion, overuse injuries, and dehydration. And as I mentioned earlier, those are the focus of our task force. We, along with launching this, we have our uh, promotion efforts through the Lincoln Journal Star. We have a social media campaign and we have technical assistance that we are uh, providing to the different youth sport organizations. One of the ways we're doing this is through a electronic toolkit, which we have housed on the Safe Kids website, which is safekidslincoln.org. And specifically, if you click on the link with the uh, sports icon, you'll be taken to the website where you'll find a lot of resources there to help parents, coaches, and directors of organizations. Included in that are uh, handouts, there's videos on specific uh, topics like I've mentioned, as well as links to uh, our partner website with Children's Hospital that will be talked about in a little bit. Again, I just want to express my gratitude to all of the organizations that are listed that have helped with this and those that are not here today speaking but do serve on the task force. All of the help's been very valuable and we're really excited about launching our initiative. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague and co-chair, Dr. Natalie Ronshagen. Thank you, Dr. Stutz. So uh, my name is Dr. Natalie Ronshagen. and I'm a sports medicine physician through Children's Hospital and Medical Center, and I have had the honor of being one of the co-chairs for this task force. Um, I am a sports medicine physician, and I am a former athlete. And through all of that, I have come to recognize the true value of youth sports. We know that young athletes are less likely to get into trouble in school. They're more likely to have good grades, and they're also more likely to have healthy relationships growing up. Unfortunately, with youth sports, there's also the risk of injury, which is where I come in, um, and this task force comes in. And we have been tasked with coming up with a good way to help prevent sports injuries and to treat sports injuries most effectively in our youth athletes. In the college and high school arena, we have the, um, the benefit of having an athletic trainer on the sidelines. They're a medical professional who can triage, put ice on the things that need ice, send people to the emergency room who need to go to the emergency room, and brush off the dirt for the kids who can go back in safely. But in youth sports, we don't have that benefit. We have limited resources and amazing coaches, but oftentimes they're not medical professionals. So in this task force, we put together as many resources as we possibly could, including a coach's manual and coach's, um, coach's training course. I utilized the, the task force uh, themselves to help me understand what we need in this course, as well as the sports medicine team at Children's Hospital and Medical Center to develop a comprehensive course that is accessible to the layperson. Um, it is also free, uh, which I think should be reiterated. This is something we want everybody to understand how to utilize and be able to find it and, and use it if they can. So it's specially made for coaches, but parents can use it. Uh, athletes can use it, anybody who is interested in more information on sports injuries. We cover concussions, we cover overuse injuries, and we even look at things like uh, your athlete with diabetes. What do you do? How do you keep them safe? Um, so it's a pretty comprehensive course. We are really wanting to be a resource uh, for safe athletics so that every kid has the opportunity to play sports in a safe, um, in a safe way so they can 
benefit from it the way I have and so many kids across the state have. Next, I'm going to pass the microphone and the podium over to Ricardo Noyola. He is the president of the Dreamers FC Soccer Club um, and has been really helpful with this whole process. Good morning. My name is Ricardo Noyola, and I'm the president and founder of Dreamers Football Club. Dreamers FC was founded in 2015 and hopes to provide an opportunity for every kid in our community, a chance to play the sport we love. We began with one team six years ago and now serve over 260 kids from the Lincoln and surrounding communities. As a nonprofit soccer club, access to coaching, education, and resources can be difficult at times. We believe that having access to this resource will be valuable for us and the soccer community. I have enjoyed being a part of this effort to address injuries among young athletes and appreciate the opportunity as administrator of youth sports organization to provide input into the development of the educational resources. A critical component to all of this, of course, is the safety of the athlete. That is why I was eager to be a part of this effort when asked to consider participating. The sports injury prevention resource provided through this project make it as simple as possible for coaches, parents, to educate themselves on preventing the most common sports injuries among young athletes. I will certainly be encouraging my coaches and families to take advantage of these important resources. Next up is Brian Vannis from Lincoln Sox. Thank you, Ricardo. Good morning. Uh, about a year ago, Brian Baker uh, approached me. He gave me a call and asked if I would be interested in participating in this youth sports injury prevention team. And I instantly said yes. It was a fantastic idea. Um, in the last 10 years or so, youth sports have just exploded. Uh, participation is greater than it's ever been. Uh, and, and a lot of those sports are now expecting almost year-round commitment from their athletes. Uh, we've made great strides in the services that we provide to athletes, uh, but there really isn't much existing in the way of regulating the knowledge that the coaches have uh, to identify, prevent, or treat injuries. Um, there's many great organizations and teams to play for, but sometimes we can lose our focus on uh, our core objectives for the sake of winning games. Uh, youth sports shouldn't be about how many 10U or 12U trophies or rings we can collect uh, but rather about teaching life lessons, developing uh, skill sets of, for the athletes, and also um, developing uh, a foster or fostering the love of the sport for the athlete. Our end goal should be to help every player reach their full potential and be prepared to make their high school team when they get there. Some of the athletes in these programs will go on to have fantastic careers. Uh, they will be amazing high school athletes, collegiate athletes, and some even professional athletes. Uh, while injuries are an unfortunate reality of participating in sports, uh, the last thing we want to do is not recognize the signs of a preventable injury, which could uh, not only make the athlete miss practices and games, but it could also uh, impact their uh, playing career and their, the, the ceiling that, that, that they hope to reach. I feel strongly that what this uh, Injury Prevention Task Force is putting together is uh, it will help the Lincoln Sox educate our coaches to recognize a serious injury or illness uh, and give them the tools to make tough decisions based upon what's best for the athlete. As we gain buy-in across all youth sports organizations, we'll be able to achieve a minimum level of injury prevention and education for the coaches in every sport. I appreciate the opportunity to be a, a part of something that will greatly enhance the experience for our youth athletes and I'm happy to bring this educational material to our Sox coaches. And with that, I would pass the podium back over to Director Lopez. Thank you, and thanks again to our entire Safe Kids Sports Injury Task Force for developing these valuable resources and sharing them with our community and our youth sports um, parents and athletes. 
You can find the game plan, videos, and tip sheets at safekidslincoln.org and just click on the sports injury prevention. And with that, we'll take any questions you may have. Director Lopez, how did you uh, and your team kind of identify that this task force was a necessary entity to have uh, in this community? What was that process? Is there any data to reflect um, that, that there is a need in this community for a sports injury prevention task force for um, youth athletes? I think the data that we had, not, I think, uh, we best let the physician talk about a little bit about sports medicine, but what we saw in Lincoln was some of the information that was coming out about sports injuries that were incurring, like the concussions and the dehydration. And also, I just want to mention again, you know, our focus is prevention, and we, and we identified certain areas where prevention uh, would really be an appropriate action it really spurred us on to bring community members together and it's task force members themselves sharing information just like the coaches here talking about what they're seeing so um, part of the data has come from really uh, pulling data from hospitals and, and what is getting um, getting taken care of in the clinics in this Lincoln area. So we were, we were noticing an uptick in some of the overuse injuries and some of the um, sports preventable injuries and that's, that's where this task force is really focused. From a sports medicine clinic perspective, just in my own clinic, we are definitely seeing an increase in sports specialization at an earlier age. Um, increases in overuse injuries because they're doing the exact same types of motions over and over again. Um, and some coaches who are really on top of things and, and recognizing injuries early and getting kids help as early as they can. Um, and other coaches who um, may be amazing coaches but are not, they, they don't know. Um, they don't know what they don't know. And so they need a little bit of um, guidance. This is an injury that is a soreness that this kid needs to put a bag of ice on this, um, take a little bit of rest from practice, or this is an injury that needs to see a doctor uh, before it gets worse and becomes more permanent. How do you identify it? Obviously, it's intuitive. It makes logical sense. But these three factors, the concussions, the overuse, and the dehydration as um, items you wanted to, to tackle, make the public aware of those three specifically, how, how did those three kind of come to the forefront? I think for a couple of reasons, we're seeing increases in all three of those uh, issues. We're also, those are three things that we can do something about. Concussions, if they are not identified early and kids are allowed to go back into the game and play, we know that they're more likely to have more long-term issues. They're more likely to have more severe symptoms. And so if we can pick up on things early, they get better faster and they heal completely. So that's an, I, shouldn't say this pun, but it's a no-brainer. Like, let's, let's make sure people have the information on that one. Um, overuse and dehydration are other ones that are just so preventable. And also ones that if you don't recognize the signs and symptoms of overuse and dehydration, you can really get a kid into trouble. So, um, so those are, have been our, our big pushes. Now, the coach's game plan, we call it the game plan, the coach's, uh, the coach's course, covers a lot more than just that. We're looking at not just dehydration, but also heat illness and how hot it, uh, you need to be concerned about having your athletes out practicing. Um, we look at, uh, does your kid have, have asthma on the team? How do you deal with that if they start having a, an asthma attack during the game? Um, and so it's pretty all-encompassing, recognizing a fracture, recognizing a sprain, what you need to do, what kids can be pushed, and what kids need to go see a doctor first. Um, so we tried to kind of hit all the bases, but, um, but these three behind me are really the, the three that we wanted, that can lead to really severe problems and can totally be, that can totally be avoided if, if people recognize what's going on. I have a question for Ricardo, if that's all right. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, um, I, I'm, I'm just wondering, you mentioned providing input um, to um, people involved about how this stuff affects, how, the, how this stuff manifests itself in, in your sport. What's just some examples of inputs that you've provided um, to, uh, to the health department and uh, the task force uh, pertaining to soccer? Some of the input I provided, for instance, I'm the president of my soccer club, right? But I also have great relationships with other clubs around town and also the state agency uh, based out of Omaha. So what I plan on doing is sharing this information with other coaches, other clubs, and also the state of Nebraska um, soccer uh, organization so they can share the information with everybody else. Um, and, and then just finally, these three factors behind you, how do you see that in your sport? I mean, obviously concussions could happen, you know, with headers and things like that. We've seen links to that overuse that makes sense, dehydration. How, how, how do you kind of see those factors uh, involved in your sport? The overuse helped us a lot when we schedule our, our training sessions. So we look at what games a player might have for the week and then the training sessions and we adapt our training sessions based on how much uh, a player or a youth might might be involved in. So if a player had, let's say, a soccer tournament for the weekend, then we might give him or her the day off the next practice. Maybe the next practice is focused more on stretching and recovery versus uh, a full training session um, that he or she might have had. And I actually have the same question for Lincoln Sox, if that's all right. So, I mean, you know, think about baseball. I think of overuse, you know, like wearing young kids' arms out, you know, pitching, you know. But you tell me, like, what, 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 how, how do those factors behind you, how do they play a role in, in your sport in terms of considering how to help out uh, young kids and make sure that they can prevent any type of injury that might come from playing baseball? Sure. Uh, yeah, all three of them are, are huge uh, impacts on our sport. Uh, concussions obviously have have had a lot of exposure in the, le the recent years, uh, but there wasn't a lot of attention to, you know, when to hold a kid out. Uh, now, you know, basically we're training our coaches, don't take any chances. If there's any question, uh, have them sit and, and don't have them come back into play until they've been evaluated. Uh, heat illness and uh, like heat stroke, heat, heat exhaustion is a big, uh, big factor in our sport because all of our games are outside, they're all in the summer. Um, you know, in the middle of July and August, it could be, you know, 105 degrees and no air. And, and we've got kids that are in catcher's gear and, and uh, you know, kids that are pitching. You know, there's a lot of exertion that goes on throughout the game. So, so that's a huge, uh, you know, a, we have a big push to make sure you maintain hydration. But you also have to kind of pick up on those signs because the athletes aren't going to be able to recognize it themselves and tell you there's a problem. So you have to really be cognizant of whether the whether they're you know focused and they're attentive or or have their responses kind of changed um yeah and and the other thing i would say is uh you know part of the contributions that we've made to the committee would be um showing like some of the information that's been given to us by our our uh governing bodies or lack thereof you know there's we've done a lot of uh great things in certain areas but not in all areas and i think i thought that the injury prevention was a, a really weak uh, area at, at least in baseball and and maybe across all sports that it isn't really uh, there's information that's given out there but they aren't necessarily required to take so it's uh it's something that we really wanted to emphasize and say okay we we need to get our coaches all up to a minimum level of information mi minimum level of knowledge so that they can uh, you know, protect their athletes and, and the parents ultimately feel comfortable with their athletes in our, in our uh, program. Have you had an injury, you know, with, with one of your kids that you look back and say that could have been prevented? Actually, yes. Uh, ironically, uh, my middle son, and this was several years ago, but he, uh, he pitched uh, a complete game um, and it was on turf. Um, it was a manageable number of pitches, but it was in the middle of the summer and it was very hot. And, uh, and then later we had a game off and then the next game after that, uh, he was catching. And so, uh, he was, had all the gear on and, and I could tell an inning or two into the game that he wasn't responding like he normally would. 
so you know we immediately pulled him out of the game and and he sat the rest of the day you know This is Margaret Reese from the Journal Sparker. Yeah, Margaret. Um, hi, this is Margaret. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering how this information is used. Is it just voluntary, or are you recommending that all coaches go through this tr through the training that's available before they coach? I mean, is do you want this to become something that that all coaches do before they start coaching now? We do, and I'm going to ask Dr. Sudis to come up and talk a little bit about that. Thank you for the question, and, and I did want to, it really tags into something that I wanted to say, and that is, uh, again, going to the Safe Kids website, uh, you'll find several different resources that are, some are just handouts, on the specific things that are up here on these posters. And then also that link that we've been talking about to the game plan. One thing about the game plan then is that when the coaches are done with that, there's actually a certificate that they'll get and they'll be able to provide that to their director of their club or whoever it is that uh, to show that they've actually completed it. And then that they have as uh, Brian from the Sox said, a minimum kind of uh, base of knowledge. Uh, as far as your question, we are obviously recommending that organizations do take a look at this and that they really do have their coaches uh, go through the course. It's, it's, a, it's 30 minutes, it's not very long at all, it's free. And like I said, you do get a certificate when you're done. Children's Hospital has done an amazing job putting this together and housing this on their website. Uh, it's, it's gone through a lot of uh, review and not just medical review, but the coaches, as you saw, they looked through that and, and they said, hey, can you change this language? Can you add something about this? We have this that happens. And so it was really a partnership doing that. So yes, we do recommend that they do it. Uh, what we've been doing, it is voluntary. That was one of your questions. Obviously it's voluntary. We can't require anything. But what we've seen though is that uh, even with uh, uh, VCN, that's not uh, here today, but with them and with the with the Sox and the Dreamers, we've seen that they've seen benefits already just from the information that they've gotten. And uh, the course is just one place where it's all put together in a nice little package. So hopefully that answered your question. Thank you. You're welcome. I think the other thing though too, Margaret, is to emphasize this is a tool that parents can use too to educate themselves about what to look for with their, with their own child and how they can help support the coaches and the work that they're doing to make sure our youth are safe, as safe as possible out there when they're participating in sports. And I think that's a key. It is a team effort on all sides. And we have to support our coaches when they're advising an action that needs to be taken with an athlete and I think that's a, another critical component of this and this is all you know as you heard uh, our fantastic speakers here today they have the great experience they're the experts and they're guiding what are the best practices for us to use and we're very fortunate that we have this resource for us in our community so we really want to encourage everyone to use it and I know that um, sports are a big part of our youth experience here. And so anything we can do to make it safe and for them to continue to participate is really the best avenue for us. Are there resources like this available to other state in other states or cities? Um, I mean, I think you, you pointed out that really there's not the kind of regulation for youth sports that there is at the high school or college level or the medical resources. So, so I just wondered how unusual this is. Yeah, uh, doctor explain a little bit about it, but remember Safe Kids is both a state organization and a national organization. But I think we should let our sports medicine expert talk. 
So thanks for that question. Um, it is actually very unique to have this comprehensive of a training program available for youth coaches. Um, there are small um, medical training programs for coaches across the country, but they are often a couple of athletic trainers or a couple of docs from the community who go out and talk to coaches. Um, there are not truly comprehensive online resources like this available. Um, there, uh, we did a national talk at, for the Safe Kids nationwide or worldwide, uh, Dr. Stutz and I did, on this exact uh, program that we're putting together. And there was a ton of interest from people from all over the country, actually. Um, so it's, it is not a new concept. People have been trying to train youth coaches for years. Um, it's just a new concept in terms of how we're delivering the information, making it a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more accessible. Um, and uh, there has been talk about potentially moving this across to the Safe Kids Worldwide to um, help people from across the country have resources like this. It's, that's probably the next step that we'll be taking. Um, but we're giving it to you guys first. Um, check out the website. Look and see what the resources are. If there's stuff that speaks to you, stuff that um, uh, you think that you could get good information from, go through it. If you want to do the full coach's course, go for it. It's 30 minutes. Um, like I said, it's free. Um, you don't have to, but it's, it's, um, it's some good data, some good information in there. And um, like I said, we're just trying to keep all these kids safe. And so if, if you've got interested in it, there's, there's lots to read on that website. Okay. Anything else? All right. Again, please go to the website. We're really excited uh, to have this opportunity today uh, and very appreciative of our task force members. Thanks for joining us.